What is good everyone? I'm Forrest Walker and hello from Mintz Belarus. So what I have planned for this video is I want to combine sharing some of my first impressions of Minsk specific to photography, combine that with my first approach to the city because I'm approaching Minsk just like I approached all the other major cities and the major city work. So I'll share some insights behind that approach when it comes to photography and then share some of the first impressions of Minsk specific to photography so you get kind of an idea of the city but also the things that I see here. Uh, some of the strengths and then also I'll be sharing some photos from my first days out here to photographing the city the whole way So let's get into it. Let me start off with a quick overview of what I mean by how I approach a city When I first approach a city like Minsk, I do do some research online I find any seemingly interesting places for photography find any interesting info on the city things like that just to give me kind of a template uh, map to work with but from there, I'm just going to try to fill out the city and explore it as much as possible. One huge thing I do is I walk as much as I can. If you followed my major city work or any of the talks I did, you know that I walked an average of over 21 kilometers, 14 miles per day, and that was year round, including travel days. So I walk a ton. And I do that because I think that's the best way to really fill out the place and also find the most opportunities for photography. You're going to find a lot of areas, discover a lot of areas that you never would have found. So a lot of times you have cities that are more compact, so you really can walk everywhere. A place like Minsk is pretty spread out. Uh, but it does have a decent metro and the metro is cheap, so it's not a, a big deal. If I can, I'm going to walk everywhere I can from place to place. But if I can't, then I'll take the metro there, but I'm not going to take the same station back. I'm going to explore all around that area. I'm probably going to go at least a few metro stations away and then really go as far as my eyes take me. I'm just trying to be free out there probably take more photos than I normally would take, I'm trying to find, feel out anything about the atmosphere, the character, the life, see anything unique, anything that stands out. And just really, it's I'm big about getting the feel for the city. Then I come back home after a few days, at least a few days of doing that. I look through the photos and again, I'm filling the photos out. I'm seeing anything, if there, if there is anything that really stands out to me that's unique to that place. Um, anything that I see that I can really work here, that, that is a, a big strength here. Looking at if there's certain places with a really good atmosphere that I should spend a lot more time at, or maybe find places similar to that too. Um, just yeah, anything that really stands out, feeling out what I can really do here, how much I can get away with too. Sometimes I'm going to dangerous dangerous places. So I'm big on approaching every place the same. When I, when I did the major city work, I committed fully to no matter the place, no matter how dangerous it is, I'm going to hit it and, and approach it the same way. And, and I did that. So that came with a lot of different dangers. So I still photographed it the same way, but you do have to adapt sometime. You have to be more observant in some places. You have to you know, there's different cultures. You have to do different things, but still, I, I believe in approaching it the same way. So when it comes to Minsk, it's it's relatively easy place to photograph. The people here are pretty photo friendly. Uh, they do think it's a little bit, uh, they're not used to it so much. So you might get, I do get some looks, but no negative reactions, uh, nothing even remotely negative. Rel relatively, it's, it's pretty easy to photograph here. So that's really what I do. I, I get a feel for it. But when I go through those photos and I'm finding the specific things that stand out to me that I like, the strengths, I don't focus on those once I go out after those first few days. I'm just putting that in the back of my head, trying to get it almost like a subconscious uh, where I re react differently or quicker. I notice things quicker. I don't want to focus on those things when I'm out because then I'm only focusing on them. So for example, and I'm going to get more into this in a bit, but one thing that really stands out in Minsk, at least during, in the winter time, is uh, the amount of fur coats you see and the fur hats. It's, it's very uh, interesting, it has a lot of character. And so that's something that I noticed that I like, but when I'm out there photographing, I don't want to be focused on that. I don't want to be thinking about that. Because if you focus on one thing and you're looking for that, you're going to miss everything else. So I want to photograph anything that comes to me, anything I find that's interesting. But if I have these things in the back of my head and how to approach certain things, it does help a lot. So that's kind of how I approach a city. And from there, I'm just tackling it more and more. So when it comes to my first impressions of Mints photographically, the things that are really standing out to me that are unique, the strengths, the challenges, just all that. One of the big things right now has a lot to do with the time of the year, but it has a lot to do with the place too and that's 
the winter time, it's cold right now. So it's been negative degrees every day. Uh, it was negative 10. It's actually, I think, warmed up to negative 3. But that affects a lot of things. I mean, one, it affects you a little bit because you have to layer up. You have to wear gloves, scarves, and all those things. And your hand does get really cold after a while, your trigger finger. But that's not a big deal. What, what I'm really talking about is how it affects the life, the atmosphere. It affects everything. Number one, it's it's just started snowing and it's probably going to be snowing most of the time. And that's a huge thing when it comes to photography because it covers the whole landscape. You have the white of the snow everywhere, which really takes over a frame. It gives you a, a nice clean background. The snow creates things like contrast uh, between the people, the elements. You have the white. It reflects light. It gives... Uh, a time, a place, an atmosphere, a mood. It does so many different things and there's certain things you can do with it. And then also you have the, the architecture here. I'm going to get more into that too because a big thing is the Soviet architecture. But the architecture here, a lot of it is shades of white and gray and tan, so light colors. And you mix that with the snow, white of the snow and then when it's snowing or it's just snowed, most of the time the sky is white too. So you have all this light color. So for people that like color, you're not going to have a lot of color. It's not like an India or anything. It's basically the, the exact opposite of that. I do love color, but when you have something that might seem like a negative, you can try to find the strengths of that when it comes to photography. So a big strength of that actually can relate to color too, is now you have a backdrop that's all light. So any color that comes into the scene is going to really pop. And the, the clothes that people wear can really add a lot of color. And then you have the background in the snow and things like that. It, it can create some really interesting frames and scenes. And when it comes to the clothes that people wear, that's another huge thing. Right now it's winter time, so everyone's bundled up. You have a variety of cold weather clothing here too. I mentioned the fur here. There's lots of fur coats here, mink coats. You have the fur hats. You have those Russian style hats where either the fur goes all around or they have the flaps like the Russian trooper hats. Uh, of fur. So that creates a, a lot of character here. It's, it's mostly older people wearing these, but it, it's a very interesting character. It's kind of unique to the region. Um, it also gives it kind of a, I don't know, it gives it kind of an older feeling when you see these. A and they also, the way the light hits them is really nice. So that can create a lot of character in photos here. And then you also have a lot of people just wearing the, the big like heavy duty coats with the hoods and they might have fur around the, the the edges too, but those can create kind of a humorous dynamic to photos too. You have the side side profiles of all those full hoods uh, where you can't even see the face, and then if you're head on and the light's hitting the face and then they're covered by the, the fur there, there's a lot of different things you can do with these clothing. A lot of it's colorful too when you have the backdrops that are not colorful, so that pops a little bit, and then you have the atmosphere here of the snow, and then you also have a river going through the city, and it's ice right now, so that creates something too. You have parks that are covered in snow. There's a lot of different things you can do with atmosphere, because the, the city has quite a few parks here, and the river, so it's mixed with the buildings, the Soviet buildings. So the cold winter atmosphere does provide a lot of different things when it comes to photography. It also does provide a few negatives too when it comes to life. Number one, uh, people are usually moving from A to B. They're not hanging out in one place so much unless maybe they're smoking or waiting for the bus stop or working. And workers can be interesting here. They're, they're Right now they're setting up a lot of decorations. So I photograph them some. They think it's a little strange. They've come up and talked to me multiple times, but as soon as they hear my that I speak English, uh, they don't care anymore and they just kind of laugh at me, but they don't mind it. So workers can be interesting. Bus stops can be interesting too. You do have people just standing most of the time, but you can have lots of different characters come, maybe play with layers. Uh, there's a few times I've seen some interesting people and tried to create some scenes there. And then smoking, that, that's not uh, very interesting to me, but you do have that. But other than that, most people are moving from A to B. But one good thing right now is it is Christmas time and they definitely celebrate Christmas here. They actually recognize too the uh, Catholic one on the 25th and then the uh, Orthodox one which I believe is around the 7th, January 7th. So Christmas decorations are everywhere. You have Christmas markets popping up now. You, they even set up like some carnival ride style rides. Christmas trees every square and other places too, lights, all that stuff. So now with the markets and, and the different festive things going on, you do have some people hanging out. So that's a plus right now and does provide more activity because in Mints, you don't have a 
too many areas for that outside concentration of life. So right now, being here in Christmas, I'm sure most people, the locals, would recommend coming in the summer, but I actually... I like the atmosphere right now. I think it's, it's, it's interesting. Also specific to this year, I mean, with the whole everything going on with the virus and a lot of the lockdowns and shutdowns going on right now, I imagine that this is about the only place going right now that's having that normal life when it comes to Christmas with the markets. Uh, I mean, places across Europe and the U.S., they're not having all those Christmas markets. Here you have that winter atmosphere, that Christmas atmosphere, and you have the markets and lights and things like that. So it's actually pretty lucky being here right now. I don't think I could photograph this anywhere else quite like it is in mints. So now let's get into mints compressions that would be true any time of the year. Number one thing you're going to see online if you look up mints and try to find any travel information or any information about the city. There's not a whole lot, but the few things that people talk about are the Soviet architecture. Now in World War II, the city was mostly destroyed. So most of the buildings here, uh, have, pretty much all of them have been, been built since then. And of course, it was part of the Soviet Union, and it's become kind of known for keeping that Soviet atmosphere going. There is a lot of uh, statues and things like that. There's Lenin statues. You'll even see like hammer and sickle and things like that, and then some of the architecture too. Now, personally, I photograph around Eastern Europe a lot. I really love Eastern Europe. For me, it just has there's something very authentic about it. It has a lot of character. I don't feel any fakeness. It's gritty and raw, but very genuine and authentic. And it's just, I, I really do love the character of Eastern Europe. But because I've photographed in Eastern Europe a lot, I've seen plenty of Soviet architecture. So for me, it's not like um, extreme wow. I, I think it's a blend. I mean, the city is very, is it, it's a pretty nice city too. It's very clean. It's very open. It blends a lot of different things. It's not just Soviet to me, like, like I read online. But it does have that. And one thing that actually is pretty unique is, is the hammer and sickle and the symbols and the things like that. Because you don't see those even in a lot of Eastern Europe, European countries anymore. Now, you don't want to be too cliche with it, but you can use it. I mean, if it's just part of the scene, it does add something to it. Getting like a Lenin statue head in there gives you a, a place and even somewhat of a time. Um, getting the hammer and sickle, things like that. There, there's some cool artwork here. Another thing about Minsk, especially when it comes to photography, is it is very spread out. You're not going to walk the whole city. There's a lot of areas where you're not going to see a whole lot of interesting things. So taking the metro is a good idea here. Luckily, the metro is good. Uh, I've been using it quite a bit, way more than I do in most cities. And it's, it's quick. And it, it gives, provides another thing to photograph, too. I know online I've seen that, that you're not really supposed to photograph the subway. Uh, but I see that in a lot of uh, Eastern European countries and I never have a problem except for sometimes in Moscow. Now speaking of Moscow, if you've ever been, been to Moscow and seen the um, subway there, it's, it's amazing. It's probably the best for me. I think it's the most interesting metro system. It's almost like a museum and they actually even do tours there. So this is in Minsk. It is kind of a typical Soviet style uh, subway, but compared to Moscow wouldn't be fair. It's nothing like Moscow, but it's still not bad. There's a few uh, subways here that have some interesting um, architecture inside and, and the marble and things like that. So photographing it there, I, I haven't had any trouble and you can find some scenes there when you're on your way to your next destination. There's not a ton of places specifically to go and hang out for photography. So I've been doing a lot of exploring of the neighborhoods too. I went to the National Library because that's one of the main things you'll find online. It won, I think, like ugliest building of the year, one of these years. but I don't even think it's that ugly. I guess when something's weird or unique, uh, it's considered ugly, but I, I like weird and unique. So the building is cool to me, but there's not a whole lot you can do there with photography. You can put that in the scene. They actually have a, a cool statue that's in front of some uh, complexes too. But when it comes to photography, that's all you're really gonna do is put them in the background. But right around there, I found that there's some really cool neighborhoods. There's a lot of different apartment uh, complexes there that have like Soviet style artwork on the side. And then when you go in, you can go into the courtyards and it was snowing. So you had that dynamic. You have the little playgrounds inside the courtyards, the trees, people walking around. So I was exploring that. I think I explored there for at least like five hours, just six, well, not five hours. I think more like three, but three hours exploring all the different neighborhoods and they were pretty much endless. So I like that a lot. I'm gonna do that there again for sure. And then I'm gonna try to find other neighborhoods too. 
Another thing that I think a lot of people, because of the, the fact that it's spread out and the, the architecture, Soviet architecture, not everyone loves, a lot of people might feel it's a little bit drab. It's also very clean, actually. So in some, some ways, it's not the most exciting city visually. So that's going to be a little challenging, but there is enough here, I think, uh, that creates enough character. And I find the life here has a lot of character. So I'm going to be focusing on that even more and then incorporating the, some of the, the character of the atmosphere in there, too. A couple last things to note before I share some of my favorite spots here so far is the, the light here. So before it snowed, actually, you had some really nice winter light. There was blue sky and the winter light was really good. It was The sun was always really low, so you had that soft light. A lot of times buildings were blocking it and your shadow might get in the way, but if you had the light hitting, hitting uh, the right way, it was beautiful, that northern winter light. But it doesn't, doesn't last very long. I'd say it doesn't get light until around 9, 10 a.m. And then it's getting starting to get dark around 4 or 5 already. Sweet spot is like, I'd say, 11 to 3. So you don't have a lot of time for light. For me, that's fine right now because I have a lot of other work to do. So I'm just doing this on the side. But if I was working on the project before and I only had a limited amount of time here, that would have been kind of a, a challenge. But... Uh, if you're here in the summer, it's the opposite, obviously. Unfortunately, once it started snowing, that nice light went away. Most of the time, you don't have a ton of light. It's more overcast. You do have the white snow, though, so that does reflect some of the light. So it's not like it's as, as gloomy as, say, like a London when it's raining or a place like that. So it's not that bad. But you're not going to have that intense light that you would have in a lot of the photos I take in, in the more warmer climates. Still... You try to find strengths in that, and there's a lot of things you can do with the light you have here. For one, you don't have to worry so much about the light because it's the same exposure everywhere. You're not having to look for the shadows and the light because it's all the same. So that's one thing. And also it creates some of the mood and the atmosphere in the photos, the light here. And last but not least, I touched on it already a little bit, but the life and the people here, that's the most important, of course. And I've had a good first impression so far. Uh, like I said, I haven't had any bad reactions here, not even a little bit. The one thing is I haven't seen anyone photographing out there. I doubt it's a really popular place for photographers to come because when I looked online, I couldn't find any photography on Mints, really. Nothing good, especially there was... Even, I tried to check like things like Magnum Archive and stuff like that for inspiration a little bit and just to get a feel of the city before I'm there. And it didn't really have anything either on Mints. So there's not a ton of photography out there. There's not a ton of photographers coming here. So the people here aren't really used to seeing people photograph. I mean, they're going to understand if you're photographing a statue or the Christmas tree or things like that. But when you're just photographing people, they're not really used to it. So I get a lot of different looks like they were kind of wondering what I'm doing, but it's it's never been uh, negative at all. They, they haven't really ever said anything. They've never really given me any mean looks, just like, huh. Uh, other than maybe a, a couple of the workers, they didn't give me mean looks, but they, they came over and talked to me. So people have been good. Uh, the people I've talked to, there's not a whole lot of English spoken here, but the people I have talked to have been really friendly. So I haven't had anyone against photos here. Um, I haven't photographed police yet. I really haven't seen any police yet. There are protests going on once a week here. I haven't seen one yet, but I do know that uh, protests aren't really allowed here. So I'm guessing photography is not really allowed here too. And it is a pretty controlled country. So I don't know what I can get away with that, but we'll see. Other than that, uh, I haven't found any places that I felt danger at all. It seems very free and safe walking around. Yeah, I mean, really, when it comes to photography, I feel completely free here to photograph what I want and how I want, and I don't think that's going to be a challenge. People act very natural here. It's just got a good vibe for photography when it comes to the life. I could keep talking and talking about my impressions of mints when it comes to photography and the feeling of the city, but those are some of my major ones, and I'm going to keep photographing the city, of course. But some of the places that, uh, that have really stood out to me so far that I would recommend if you're ever here are, for one, uh, the squares here are pretty interesting. You have quite a few. Uh, one of them is Independence Square, and that one is probably visually the most appealing. You have uh, you do have a Lenin statue here, but you also have a really 
beautiful church here. Right now you have a big Christmas tree. There's some nice architecture around it. So it's a, it's a pretty nice square. Uh, when it comes to activity, I haven't seen a ton of activity there. For activity right now, probably the busiest square is October Square. I don't know how normally busy it is, but it's pretty wide open. And right now they've set it up all for Christmas. So there's people there. There's some market there. There's a big Christmas tree, some decorations. So there's a lot going on there. It's also right in the center of the city, right by a, a good metro station. And it's, it's a good place to walk because... Also, one thing about a lot of the major squares here are they run along the same avenue, and that's Independence Avenue, the main avenue here. It's a very wide avenue, and it's also a good place to take a photo walk. You can start at Independence Square, then you can run through um, October Square, then you can go to Victory Square, which has a big monument and an internal flame. There's not a lot of activity there. It's actually right in the middle of a road, so I think like a roundabout, but you can go underneath the tunnel and come up there, and they do have the flame there and a big monument. If you keep walking, then you'll hit another square and you'll actually go by a uh, major market here, Kamaruski Market, which I see a lot of potential at. If you look at it online, you'll see that it's inside a huge building, so it's enclosed which I don't like uh, markets inside. It makes sense here because it's cold, but uh, markets inside I don't like at all because the light is horrible, it's darker, you have the fluorescent ugly lights, and then just people behind like glass you know, uh, countertops and things like that. It, it's not great for photography, but luckily here, that's just the main part of it. Outside of it, you have more market that gets the light, and they, it's way more interesting too. You have one part where they're selling fish, they have like these big trucks that live fish are inside and this guy with the net, he's pulling them out and putting in these buckets as people come and they weigh, pick the fish and weigh it out. That has some character. There's some stands for people selling like produce. Right now, because of Christmas, there's people selling Christmas trees. So there's a lot to photograph outside too. I think another really good walk here is to walk along the river. There's a pathway and it goes through parks in the city and you'll see people feeding the ducks. Uh, even on the ice right now, and it goes through a lot of different interesting areas. Other spots, I'd say, are like Gorky Park or the other parks that are here. Right now, they're not so active because it's cold and snowing, but they're still interesting to go in, and I still saw some people uh, around there. So, yeah, those are the main spots that I've seen so far. I don't know how long this video is now. I probably talked a little too much, but hopefully you got an idea of some impressions of the city, specific especially to photography. Got to see some photos of the city, an idea of what it's like here, and also some of my insights of how I'm approaching cities and places, especially when it came to the major city work. And maybe you got something helpful out of it too. Again, I'm trying to make these videos very specific to photographers and photography. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next week. It's probably going to get even more winter and Christmas atmosphere, so I'll share some of that. But I already have a, a video planned for next week. You're going to have to stay tuned to see what that's about. But until then, cheers.